Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the God. And it is a short passage, but an important passage. And so what we want to do today, because it is a shorter passage, we want to invite you to read it together. So we'll all read it. You'll find it in your order of service. It's right there, right in the order of service. And as soon as you get that together, I will begin. We can read the scripture together. 2 Corinthians, let us read. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the Holy Ghost. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Yes, it's one God, but 
but it's three forms. And so the doctrine of Trinity, of the Trinity, says that God is three consensual persons or beings. There is the Father, there is the Son, the Holy Spirit, and they are one God and three divine persons. There we have the Trinity. The Word is not in the Bible, but certainly we see God working within the Scriptures in this form. So today we celebrate it. But as we celebrate it, we want to try to understand it. And can we? Can we understand the Trinity? Can we define it? Can we explain it? So a lot of times we come up with ways to explain the Trinity. Just like Kay did with the children. And there are countless analogies that we have to explain the Trinity, right? You've heard them. You've shared them before. A lot of times people will say the Trinity, we can understand the Trinity kind of like water, right? Water is H2O. It is always H2O, but it can have different forms. In the liquid form, it's water. But when the liquid gets to heated above uh, 212 degrees, it becomes steam, right? And so steam is a gas, but it's still H2O. And if it gets cold enough, it becomes a solid, it becomes ice. So it's ice, it's a liquid, uh, it's a gas, and it's all H2O. So the Trinity is like that, except that H2O can only be one form at a time, right? And so that even falls short a little bit. Sometimes people say we can understand it like in the way that we relate to people. So I am one person, but I am a husband, I am a father, and I'm a son, right? I, I'm also a pastor and a friend and a brother and all of these things. And so how I relate to people uh, is different. Problem with that is, is that I only relate to people in one way. I am only a husband to Kara. I'm not her brother. Right? <laughs> I am just her husband. And so some of these things break down, these explanations break down. Other people have said it's like a child's hair that you braid. Three different pieces of hair or parts of hair braided together form one braid, but it's three separate parts. We hear people um, talking about an apple or an egg, right? So an egg, it, you, you take an egg and it has a hard shell, and it has the, the middle, the inside, and the yolk. And those are three different pieces, but it's all one egg. And even St. Patrick, St. Patrick who brought the gospel to Ireland, he used the shamrock, which was one plant, but it had three different leaves. He said it's all one, but there's three different parts. We have all of these explanations, but, but they kind of fall short. One of my favorite, one of my favorite is from Frederick Buechner. Frederick Buechner says, if you want to understand the Trinity to try to explain it, look in a mirror. He said, if you look in a mirror, you see there in the mirror is the interior life known only to you. That's like the Father. You look in the mirror and you know that life only is the way you understand it as the Father. But as you look, you see a visible face. You see something that you can touch, something that can be seen. And that reflects that inner life. There's a physical form that reflects the inner life. And so the face that you can see is like the sun. But then there is the invisible power that you have that enables you to communicate your inner life. And that's like the spirit. Beatner goes on to say, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit means that the mystery beyond us, the mystery among us, and the mystery within us are all the same. 
explain the Trinity. It's helpful to have these analogies. It's helpful to think about it. Can we really, truly grasp it? Or is it that the Trinity is something to be experienced? Something that we experience. Like love. We can try to define love. We can sing about love and we can talk about love. But we don't really know love until someone loves us and we love someone. And what we find with the Trinity, if the understanding of God is that even though it may be hard to define, it may be hard to explain, and nothing seems to be perfect, what we find is that the Trinity is the way that God relates to us. The different ways in which God relates to us. It's all about God who is seeking to be relational. And God comes in these different persons to share with us, to be with us. And so we can see God as Father and Creator who continues to create. We believe it, right? That God created the heavens and the earth and all that there is. But we also know that God didn't finish on that sixth day. That God continues to create. And God is in His heavenly place and is as Father. And He continues to create every day, right? He's a new creation. Every moment. And God is out there creating new possibilities for us and new moments for us and new things for us to experience. And so there is God as Creator continuing to create. God who is above us, who is over us, and creating for us, and with us, and in us. And then we see God who is beside us in Christ Jesus. God who takes the, the physical form, the human form, and God comes to walk right with us. So God creates, and we as humans, I mean, who thought that creation, right? And so then God comes as Redeemer, who comes and forgives us and shows us how to live our life and how to walk and to fix and to create and be forgiven. Now we can say, wait a minute, we, we don't get to see Christ now except for that Christ says, whenever two or three are together, I'm with you. And so God comes to us in a physical flesh and blood and bone form. And we experience God in that way. And then there is the Spirit. The Spirit of God that empowers us to do the work that God calls us to do. And isn't that interesting? God creates. He creates us. God continues to create. And then God sends Himself to forgive us, to be with us when we mess things up. And then God invites us and empowers us to be about His work. The Spirit is there to empower us to go about God's business, to share the good news with others, to be with others, to transform others. And God is there working with us. Is it a mystery? Absolutely. Can we fully define it? Maybe not. Because it's meant to be experienced. God is something that we experience. We come together, we learn, we know. In South Africa, there is a tree that is called the Trinity Tree. It's in Johannesburg. And it stands in the yard of a retreat center. And when viewing this tree from a particular angle, one sees a single tree. It just looks like one tree with a very large trunk. But from another angle, viewing, the tree appears as three distinct trees down to the very roots. 
It has three different trunks, but it's all one tree. And the tree was nicknamed Trinity, of course. Three in one. The base of the tree becomes a meeting place. It became a place where people gathered together. And they would come together and experience community. There around its trunks, the deep things of life were discussed. And no matter where you leaned on the tree, you were supported. No matter where you gazed upon it, it was beautiful. Three trunks, one tree, inseparable and unified at its base, drawing us into fellowship with one another. It is amazing. The existence of this tree is a natural and compelling illustration of the existence of true art God, God who is Trinity, a God that operates in community to create community. Whether we call God Father, or Jesus, or Holy Spirit, God is with us, and God hears us, and God works through us. And so no matter the name, God will bear you up. But no matter where you look, you can see the beauty of what God is doing. God the Creator. God the Savior. God who empowers. Luring us into a loving relationship with God's self and with one another. You can look at a tree and you can see the power of God. Trinity is not something that we can find than to experience. And isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that when Paul is closing out his letter, his third letter, his second letter, the final words to this church in Corinth, the church that, that he had an interesting relationship with, the church where he was trying to set them right, and he was trying to repair the relationship he had with them. As he was finishing up this final letter, he writes them a prayer. And in this prayer, he doesn't explain the Trinity. He simply prays that they would experience it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Paul's final words to the Corinthians is a prayer hoping that they would experience God and God's Trinity form. Is the word Trinity in the Bible? No. Are the forms of the Trinity there? Absolutely. Can we fully understand it? By explaining it, I don't think so. We experience God. God who is in community longs to have community with us. He comes to us. And Paul prayed the Corinthians would experience God through the Trinity. And today, that should be our prayer. That we would experience God the Creator who continues to create, who's creating wonderful and beautiful things. That we would experience the grace of God in Christ Jesus who forgives us when we take God's gifts and we ruin them and who walks with us to show us the way. That we would experience God who empowers us to join God in God's work. Trinity something for us to experience. And it is my prayer that our church would experience God, experience the Trinity, so that we can transform ourselves, we can transform our community, we can share the love of God with all those around us. Thanks be to God.